Hi guys, this is part two of video five for Madison's YouTube channel. And in this video, I'm going to talk about Madison's first CF lung clean out hospitalization. Um, she was admitted January, I believe it was January 12th, 2016. And let me kind of tell you how everything started. So she started to have kind of a wet, nasty cough um, on a Tuesday. And um, we went ahead and upped treatments. Um, which is our protocol. Um, if she kind of has a cough starting, we go ahead and up treatments to try and avoid any kind of antibiotic or anything else um, and hopefully just kick it with up to treatments. Um, so what that means is increasing albuterol and CPT to instead of two times a day, we do it four times a day. So I went ahead and got in three treatments before bed and had put her down and about 10 o'clock I heard kind of her making a weird noise on uh, the baby monitor. So I decided to go in and check on her and um, when I went in there I could see that she was retracting right here when she was breathing in and then um, she was wearing a onesie and I kind of unbuttoned her onesie to look at her rib cage and she was retracting under her rib cage as well, which means she can't breathe very well. Um, so I'm kind of freaking out. I wake up Nick and we went ahead and called the on-call physician and started on a fourth uh, treatment um, and I decided to go ahead and throw in like a, hyper a hypertonic saline neb to try and get her to clear out some of that mucus to help her breathe each easier which worked really well within about two minutes she had actually thrown up a pretty large amount of mucus um, which is good but pretty miserable for her so anyways we we called the on-call physician he you know we were waiting for him to call us back we finished with her CPTs and by the time he had called back, Maddie was asleep. So he said to go ahead and just wait until morning and to follow up with her CF team in the morning. So, you know, I obviously kept her in bed with me all night and didn't sleep very much. Just watched her and made sure she was okay. Um, and about 7 a.m., she was really retracting again and it was just freaking me out. So we went ahead and just took her into the children's ER uh, associated with the CF clinic. And um, once we got there, you know, they pretty much admitted her right away. She was pretty lethargic. Her O2 saturation was like 82. Um, you could just tell she didn't feel good. So that first day, they didn't do too much. Um, they just kind of kept her hydrated with her IV and scheduled for a pick line placement the very next morning um, on day two. So that was really super hard for me. Um, it's hard to watch your child you know, go back and be sedated and then have to leave her. Um, I don't know, a lot harder for me than it was for her, but it was not fun. <laughs> um, so basically a PICC line is like an IV, um, only it can be kept in place for a lot longer than an IV. Um, they use a main artery and it, um, a little catheter goes up through the artery into her heart to help get the medications through to her faster. So, um, at this point, we weren't exactly sure how long we would be there. Um, we were just kind of playing by ear to see how Madison did. Um, they started her on two IV antibiotics. Um, the first was tobramycin, and she did that every 12 hours. And I believe it was like 2 a.m. and 2 p.m. that she got that. And then the second antibiotic was flagell, and that was every six hours, so four times a day. And... Um, then she also had treatments, which was four times a day, um, every four hours. Um, so she was, you know, hooked to her IV um, or, you know, stuck in bed getting her treatments done a good part of the day. There wasn't a lot of the time that she didn't have something going on. So, yeah, it was it was a lot of just trying to help her get feeling better. Um, along with her pick line... They also started her on just some oxygen because her O2 sats continued to be low. Um, I think at one point the highest she received was just a liter of oxygen and she was able to wean down from that pretty quickly, um, but you know, needed it pretty continuously. So we did the, the O2 and then, or the oxygen I'm sorry, and then um, about day five, she really hadn't eaten anything and anything that she had attempted to eat, she was coughing and gagging so hard she threw it up. So they went ahead and placed an NG tube down her nose into her stomach and just kind of um, slowly pumped in her food so that she could 
you know, always kind of have the continual run of that so that she could get her strength back and, you know, start getting healthier because you can't, you can't get better from being sick if you're starving and not eating. So, um, yeah, those were the, the biggest parts. Um, and just kind of waiting to see how she responded. Um, she did really well. Um, at the end of the two weeks, she was a completely different kid. She was feeling so much better. Um, we did go home on oxygen, which she needed just at night for about two and a half weeks after her hospital stay. So, um, you know, it wasn't that, it wasn't that bad. It was, well, I mean, it's easy for me to say that. She was the one that had to wear it at night and I'm sure that was no fun. But, um, so yeah, um, it, the biggest thing that I wanted to talk about uh, you know, obviously besides kind of what happened in the hospital is um, kind of being an advocate for your child. And I, you know, I think I might have talked about this in one other video, but it's really so important. And for Madison, every single time she goes to the doctor, whether it's her pediatrician or her CF clinic, um, what a doctor looks like to her is somebody with a mask on, should we don't ever see their faces really. Um, mask on, a full yellow gown, gloves, and that's what they look like when they were in the hospital. Anybody that came into her room, anybody that came in, had to be gowned up and mask and gloves. And every time we go to the CF clinic, gown, mask, gloves. Every time we go to her pediatrician, she does the same thing. So that's what a doctor looks like to Madison. Um, but anyways, it's just protocol to help keep um, germs away from Madison. And, um, you know, there was a nurse there um, who was not following that protocol. And as a parent, uh, it's, it's kind of a weird feeling. Obviously, you want the nurse to follow the protocol, but it's hard to speak up because that nurse is the one taking care of your child. So it's scary. It's intimidating to... I don't know, like, I don't know, it's just weird. Maybe it's just me, but um, it was hard. So I had to just remind myself, you know, this is for Madison, it's not for me. It's, you know, it's I'm okay with making things maybe a little bit awkward, hopefully not. Hopefully the nurse wouldn't take offense because it's nothing personal, you know, but I, you know, asked the nurse a couple of times to go ahead and gown up before she came in. She continued to not, um, so I actually had to go to the um, the nursing supervisor and basically tell them I did not want that nurse again. Please put her on my, you know, don't come back in the room list. <laughs> so, I mean, that's always hard and it was awkward and I not something fun. Um, I don't like tension and um, it was just really hard to... It was really hard to focus on um, trying to get Madison better and, you know, it's just, I don't know, it was just hard, I guess. Um, I didn't want to have to worry about whether or not the nurses were going to gown up. So, I, with the exception of that one nurse, everybody else was wonderful. And um, I just really want to put it out there that, you know, you need to be your child's advocate. You know your child best. You know what's best for them. Um, it might not be fun, it might, you know, make you nervous, but really it's, it's for the best, you know, and you just gotta kind of remember that. Um, so yeah, it was, you know, Maddie has done well ever since her admission, she hasn't been sick. I've been sick, I had like a cough and a cold, and she didn't get it. Um, granted, I, you know, disinfected as much as I could, and, you know, really tried to keep her healthy, but... I mean, I feel like she's done so great since her admission, so I'm hopeful that she will continue to do wonderful and just so thankful again for all the wonder pe wonderful people that took care of her and um, that we have this these kind of things to help her. So yeah, that's basically her two admissions. Um, in the next video, I'm going to... Um, we have a CF clinic appointment on April 5th, I believe, 
and I'd like I'm gonna video a little bit during the clinic appointment and then also Benjamin is going to have another sweat test so I'm going to record that as much as I can I mean I'm not gonna record it maybe just pictures or something I'm not sure but we'll see how it goes I'm not gonna you know if he's scared I'm obviously gonna be there for him <laughs> and not be like oh like trying to record you know I, I don't know I'm not gonna do that so um we'll see how he does hopefully I can record some of it um just to show you guys how how it goes and um yeah so that's what I plan on doing next so thank you so much for watching let me know if you have any questions and I'll see you in the next video thanks